Well, even in these days of MP3s and digital downloads, it's still fun to listen to the old CD collection every now and then. Hadn't done it a while, so I decided I'd drop a couple CDs in the old CD player and uh, sit back and relax. Well, to my surprise, I pressed the button to open the tray to put in the CDs, and all I got was a screeching noise. Well, first part of the project is go ahead and take the four screws out of the side and then go ahead and lift the cover off. Once the main cover's off, it's a matter of just going ahead and slide the tray all the way to the stops. In this case, this tray uses two little plastic quarter turn stop pieces that actually prevent the tray from extending all the way. All that's required to move them is a pair of needle nose pliers. Just take it and turn them 90 degrees and they pull straight out as you can see here. Once they're out, you can push the tray all the way full forward and come right out of the unit. As you can see here, this exposes a little drive motor and my previous repair that wasn't working too well. The belt stretched on me a while back, so I went in and replaced the drive belt with a rubber band that worked pretty well for about a year or so. And now it's time for more permanent fix. In this particular case, I just happened to have the correct O-ring in my plumbing parts. And yes, an O-ring works very well for this application. Something 1 16th of an inch cross section is a perfect application for this little one. Okay, so what do you do if you're not like me and have a large little stock of O-rings laying around that just happen to fit these type of applications? Usually the problem is they stretch. Sometimes they'll break. If in any case you want to find the old belt, if at all possible, to help you identify the new replacement belt. Now comes the fun part, trying to find a replacement belt and trying to determine what size belt you need to replace the old one with. Here's the one method I definitely do not recommend. Even if you have the old belt, it's likely to be egg-shaped. Trying to take the old belt and make it round and measure it is something that's not going to be very accurate. You really don't want to do this. Okay, let's look at a couple common scenarios that me may run into when you're doing this. Scenario number one, you have the old belt. It's complete. It's still intact, but it's stretched. Scenario number two, you have the old belt, but it's broke. It's in one piece. Best thing to do here is lengthen the belt, measure how long the piece is, treat that as the inside diameter, and then you want to buy one belt size under that inside diameter. Third scenario is you don't have the belt or it's in pieces. Probably the best thing to do here is get a little temporary help from someone. Get you a piece of string, wrap it around the two sheaves, pull it tight, and then have someone help you mark it where the two strings would cross to give you a length of the belt. Treat this as your inside dimension, and then buy one belt size under this dimension. Now back to my first scenario I didn't finish with. Here's a method I recommend to determine the belt size that you actually have right now. Try and locate a suitable size container or container cap that just is the almost exact size that the belt is. Slide the belt over the top of the cap and then use a ruler or better yet veneer calipers to measure and see how big the belt is on the inside diameter. Next step is you're going to want to do, take the belt that you've got and hunt up a belt that is one size under this exact belt size. Now we come to the hard to find portion of the video. You can still buy these belts. They're available on eBay, but they're usually listed by application and not by size. So here's my recommendation. Use plumbing parts to fix your CD player. Mechanical O-rings come in numerous sizes. They've been standardized years ago using a standardized numbering system. Most plumbing manufacturers usually use this to design their equipment so one of their O-rings fits a standard. And as good fortune would have it, Danko sells a whole line of replacement O-rings. Their numbering system is different from the standard O-ring numbering system, so you have to use this little table to cross-reference them. Any good hardware store should be able to set you right up for less than a dollar an O-ring. Okay, let's finish this whole project up. Next step is to go ahead and push the tray back to beyond where the stops will be engaged. Then these little quarter turn stops go in. They just slide straight in, then turn them a quarter turn. Left to right, doesn't seem to matter. Once the stops are in place, you can slide the tray fully home 
And then it's time, of course, to go ahead and put the cover back on and put the side bolts back in. And this little project's about done. And somebody probably just said, well, yeah, but did you fix it? Well, just turn the power back on, press the button to open and close the tray a couple times and make sure this thing's going to work smoothly. And as you can see, it works quite well. That wraps this one up. Thanks for watching. Hope you're liking what you're seeing. If you do, give me a like and consider subscribing. Just find out a few other things like this coming up you're going to want to take a look at. Until our paths cross again, this will be the engineer on the side. We gone.